Hey guys, Dr. Betts here. Today's video, we're going to go over some of the finer aspects of the 2210 online organic chemistry course that I developed. There may be some subtle changes here and there that, that the video doesn't go over, but for the most part, this is how the course is going to be run. All right. So now the first thing you're going to want to do as a student in this class is go over this syllabus. That's the very first thing you're going to want to do. All right. The syllabus is right here. Syllabus slash start here. So let's click on that. There's going to be a welcome letter. Now, your specific faculty is going to fill this out. There's going to be, hi, welcome to the class kind of thing. It's going to give you some information about your faculty member, their credentials, things like that. Here's the syllabus right here. Let's click on that. Now, your faculty member, it may be me, it may be somebody else, will fill out all these red squares, or red, red text, excuse me, with all their information, their office hours, and things like that. Down here, we'll find the course information. This is a three-credit online course with proctored exams. Exams at this time are proctored through a company called HonorLock. That may change in the future, but as of right now, the recording of this video, we are using HonorLock for proctoring. There are some graded and non-graded activities in this class. All the graded activities will be quizzes, discussions, student interactive activities, Alex, and exam. Later on in this video, I'll explain a little bit more about some of these things that maybe you don't know, especially the interactive activities and Alex. Non-graded activities for your practice problems. There's problems that I've created for you guys and there's video solutions that I've also created for you guys so you can have the, the practice problem and then there's a video solution that you can look at to see me solving the problem for you so you can kind of gauge how you're doing in the class just by using the practice problems. There's video lectures. So I am giving lectures about all the important topics in this class through uh, video lectures, and you will also have access to my lecture slides that I'm using to do my video lectures. Prereqs and corecs, of course, there's prereqs, and there's a corec. So the pre, uh, basically the prereqs are General Chem 2 and General Chem 2 Lab, and the corec for this class is Organic Chemistry 1 Lab. General course outcomes. Now, you can read these at your pleasure, but for the most part, the general course outcomes are you're gonna learn, to, you're gonna learn to apply the general rules of organic chemistry to problems. And you'll be pretty good at it when the time comes. Textbooks for this class, there is no text you have to pay for. There's a book that's online. It's through a company called Libra Text Chemistry. It's basically just an online textbook. Uh, that book is going to change fall of 2023. So if you're watching this video in the fall of 2023, this book has changed to a book called uh, McMurray's Organic Chemistry. But as of right now, that book's not available. In addition to the textbook that's outlined above, uh, we also are going to be using what's called Alex. Alex is a online learning system. It's not really homework. They don't like it when you call it homework. It's an online learning system. Alex um, is an amazing tool, which we'll talk about later, but it is an amazing learning tool that you're going to have to use. And at this point, it is fully available to you because you're a student at Broward College using what is called Broward's First Day Program. The First Day Program basically allows every student to have immediate access to Alex, and you will be billed by the college later on. So that you'll be billed through the college system somehow. I'm not sure of the exact details of how you're billed, but I know the, the college will bill you for it, and you can use your financial aid to pay for it. Using uh, Broward First Day is a great tool because it gives you access immediately to everything you have, or everything you need, excuse me, in Alex. And it gives you a small discount just by doing it this way, by, by allowing the school to bill you this way. The publisher of Alex has given you a small discount. Uh, in order to be effective in this class, you're going to have to have the right equipment. You're going to need a reliable internet connection. The regular access to computer, laptop, or a desktop with an updated operating system and a web browser. You can visit this website to find out about the technical requirements for this course. You're gonna need access to Microsoft 365 that's available to all Broward College students. Follow this link here to get access to 365. You're also gonna need a webcam and a microphone for proctored exams. Also, you may wanna have a webcam and microphone just to talk to me on Zoom, or not necessarily me, but your faculty member on Zoom or some other video, video conferencing software. Student expectations. Attendance verification. Now, the college requires your faculty member to confirm that you've attended class. So how are we going to do that in an online course? Basically, we're going to look for you to do the syllabus quiz. So make sure you're doing the syllabus quiz way before the deadline so that your faculty member can report attendance way before the deadline. The college really, really, really gets on top of faculty members to report their numbers on time. 
uh, because it's a federal government requirement. And uh, we don't take that lightly. So please uh, do yourself and everyone a favor. Do the syllabus quiz right away so your faculty member will know that you've attended class and they can report their numbers to the college. Uh, withdrawal policy, it is your responsibility to withdraw yourself from this course by the deadline. If you stop attending, if you stop participating, faculty does not withdraw students. We just don't. I don't even know how to do it. I don't think we're even allowed to. Um, so you will receive an F, but you can withdraw yourself. Any questions, call the registrar's office and they can lead you through it. Computer skills, you have to know how to use a computer. You have to know how to email, attach things to email, submit things. You have to know how to do basic computer stuff. Class activities, discussions. Now, discussions will be posted on D2L discussion. There's a little tutorial right here if you don't know how to do that. It's very simple. Basically, we're going to have two discussions. You're going to, they're worth 50 points each. They're not very long, 30 to 50 words. We're not, I'm not looking for you to write a huge essay here. I just want to get the flavor of what you've learned about the discussion topics. The topics are, I think, pretty neat. Uh, one talks about chemicals that are used as food additives and flavorings. The other one is drugs that contain a chiral center. So I think that's going to be pretty interesting for you guys to, to research and talk about. I don't want you to see this as a burden to you. I'm actually hoping that you'll see it more as a point of interest for you. That's how I look at it anyway. I think it's kind of neat to look at uh, chemistry and what it's used for, not just for uh, something to make you suffer, but it's also something that's very, very useful in your life and possibly in your career. Assignments. Assignments must be submitted by the due date specified in the syllabus or in Alex. Now, all of your assignments are going to go through this product called Alex. Now, let's talk a little bit more about Alex right now. Alex is an amazing tool. It's simply amazing. It is an adaptive learning platform. What Alex will do is it'll give you, when you first log in, it'll give you what's called an initial knowledge check. It's going to see where you are. Now, some of the questions in the initial knowledge check might be very difficult for you, and that's okay. That's not meant to hurt you. It's not meant to make you feel bad about yourself. It's meant to gauge where you are in your learning of organic chemistry. You may be way ahead. You may be slightly behind, but don't worry. Just when you're doing the knowledge check, just make sure you answer honestly. Don't look up answers. Don't get help from your friends. Just answer honestly. Alex is going to put you somewhere in the learning system where you need to be. It's going to help you learn concepts that you haven't learned yet. And it's going to help build you up from there. It's going to meet you where you are. Instead of just throwing you into the deep end, we're going to wade you through the shallow end first if you need that. And if you don't need that, if you're already way ahead, it's going to put you further ahead. It's, it's really, really a good system, but you have to be honest with the knowledge check. Now, once you've done the knowledge check, there are going to be 10 assignments. But there's also something very interesting about Alex. Alex doesn't just have assignments. It also has what's known as Pi Progress. Now, Pi Progress is very simple, your progress through the course. It's how you're progressing into the course, okay? Now, the assignments in Alex are worth points, and the Pi Progress is also worth points. They total 400 points out of the, in the course. So the total score you can get in Alex is 400. The assignments are not worth that much. The assignments, I think, are worth less than 40. I don't remember. I'll show you in the syllabus here in a minute. But they're worth far less. Completing your pie is worth far more. It's the majority of your Alex grade. So the assignments are simply there to give you a deadline to where we think you should be in the pie progress. If you don't make it, you'll lose points. For sure, you'll lose some points. But you can still keep working on your pie progress. Keep chipping away at the pie progress. Keep learning new concepts, mastering new concepts, and your pie progress will keep building and building and building until it gets to 100%. That's what I'm looking for. I want to see you make the assignments if you can, but if you can't, keep chipping away at your pie progress. It will definitely help you uh, learn organic chemistry, and it should help you on the exams as well. So these are your assignments. All the assignments are done through Alex. Student interactive activities. Now, interactive activities are simply just click-through activities that highlight some of the more important topics and skills that you will need to master in this course. I made these activities myself. All the drawings, all the chemistry drawings and stuff like that, I did that myself because I think it's very, very important things for you to learn in organic chemistry. Every unit has two of them. Now, there is going to be unit XA and unit XB where X is the um, unit. So X can be 1 through 10. So unit 
xa or say unit 1a for example that is for credit that's going to count that's going to be part of your overall score unit xb or say for example unit 1b that is for extra credit if you don't have time to do both make sure you do letter a x1a or sorry unit 1a unit 2a unit 3a make sure you do those because those definitely count the b versions they are for extra credit now don't get this confused just because it's extra credit doesn't mean it's not equally important as A. It is equally important as A. I'll give you some inside information. It took me hours to make each one of these activities. I hope you take that to the bank that, it, to me at least, these are very, very important things for you to master. Alex is going to test you on this. The activities are going to help you learn it, and it's more than likely going to be on your exams. So these are things you'd certainly want to master. There's other things you want to master too, but for sure, these things are important. Quizzes and tests. In this class, there will certainly be quizzes and there will be exams or tests. They're all taken on D2L. The quizzes are on D2L. The exams are on D2L. The quizzes are not proctored. You can just learn however you learn to get the answers right in the quizzes. The exams, however, are proctored. So now the quizzes are available on D2L. There are 12 of them worth 10 points each for a total of 100 points. That means your two lowest scores in quizzes will be dropped. Quizzes contain multiple choice and true-false questions. You have three attempts. You have unlimited time to take the quiz, but each quiz has a due date. The score will be available immediately upon submission, and once graded, D2L will tell you which questions you answered incorrectly. So when you do the attempt again, now you know the question you have to focus on. The other, you'll have to do the entire quiz again, though. Uh, your exams this semester will be proctored by HonorLock. HonorLock is an online proctoring company. They proctor exams. Uh, you'll have to have a webcam. You'll have to have a microphone. And you'll have to give HonorLock complete access to your computer, more or less. Um, basically, they're going to lock you out of everything else on your computer but the exam. To use HonorLock, now write this down. This is very, very important. A lot of students mess this up. To use HonorLock, you have to use Google Chrome. There's no other web browser that'll work. And you have to have an extension called HonorLock Chrome Extension. Without that extension, and if you're not using Chrome, it simply won't work. Now, if you're trying to write the exam and you're prompted for a password, numerous things probably have gone wrong at this point. You're either not using Google Chrome, or you don't have the HonorLock Chrome extension installed, or there's an outside chance your faculty member hasn't set up the exam correctly. If you're prompted for a password, make sure you're using Google Chrome, and make sure you have the HonorLock Chrome extension activated. If you do, you double-checked it, triple-checked it, email your faculty member, let them know there's a problem. Contact HonorLock as well. Let them know there's a problem. Maybe they can help you troubleshoot it. Maybe it is a small problem that they can fix. Okay, so go ahead and read all this. Uh, one thing for sure you have to do is do the honor lock system check. Um, there's a little quiz on D2L. I think it's four questions. And basically, it's just making sure your system is up and ready to go with honor lock. If it's not, if you have problems, contact honor lock directly. Uh, tell them you're having problems and they can try to help you. Proctored exams. There are three exams in this course, each worth 200 points for a grand total of 600 points for the entire course. Exams contain between 30 and 50 multiple choice questions worth between one and four points each, depending on the difficulty of the question. You will have one attempt at each exam. You will have 90 minutes to take each exam. That's a lot of time. I don't think it'll take any of you 90 minutes. Each exam will have a window of time in which every student must write the exam. So how I do it, now your faculty may be different, but most of us do it in a similar way is I'll open the exam and I'll give you about a week to finish it. If you don't make it within that week, there's really not a lot. Personally, That if it was my course, there's not a lot I'll do for you because you've had a week to do it. So make sure you don't wait to the last minute. Uh, oftentimes, and I see it every semester, students will wait to take an hour and a half exam and they'll log on at 11.59 when the exam closes at midnight. You're not going to finish. So don't do that. Give yourself plenty of time. My advice is do it at least a day before the deadline. If you can't, for whatever reason, try to do it as early as you can before the deadline. Allow yourself to have time to technical shoot. A lot of times, especially the first exam, students will forget they have to use Chrome. They'll forget they have to use HonorLock. They'll forget a whole bunch of stuff. 
So give yourself lots of time to mess up. The score will be available within seven days from the last day the exam window is open. So I'll give you a seven-day window. On the seventh day, the exam closes. And then within seven days of the closing date, we will post your score on D2L. Please keep in mind that that's a soft seven. Probably it'll be seven days. For me, I usually do it within seven days. But you have to also remember we have to watch a lot of video. We have to watch all your honor lock video. We have to look for cheating and academic dishonesty and stuff like that. So it may take certain faculty members, if they're really busy, a little more than seven days. But please wait seven days before you email your faculty member to ask them uh, when the exams will be posted. Late work policy. Unless otherwise noted by your instructor, submitting late work will be permitted only under qualifying circumstances and only with prior notice and supporting documentation. So here's our course schedule. Now, right now, this, this class is not filled out. So these, these dates will be filled out by your faculty member. So you'll know when things are due, dates and times. So now, let's take a look at how each unit is set up. Every unit tells you what's, this, what's called the specific learning outcome. There will be a required reading section. A, basically, it's a folder that tells you all the required, required reading from the textbook. Watch the lecture video in the unit, in unit 1 video practice folder in the item labeled Unit 1 Video Lectures. So there's a folder called Unit 1 Videos and Practice. And there's an item inside the folder called Unit 1 Video Lectures. You click on that and it's yours truly on YouTube giving you the lecture for this course, for this unit. Complete the interactive activities. So I think you should watch the videos first and then complete the interactive activities. Now, if you don't want to, you can do it another way. You can also just go ahead and do the formal charge quiz and the Unit 1 quiz if you want to. That's fine. Or you can go to Alex. Depends on how you want to learn. I don't really mind if you do Alex and then watch the videos, if that's how you want to try it. I think most students are more successful if they watch the videos first. In my in-person classes, students will watch the videos, then they'll do Alex, then they'll do the other things. That's kind of how they do it. But you do what you do to learn. All I really want you to do is master organic chemistry. And you'll see that most chapters are set up, or most units, excuse me, are set up in the same way. But be mindful. Some units have extra things. Like, for example, Unit 2 has now a discussion. So there's an added discussion in Unit 2. So everything else is the same, but we've added a discussion. So now you have to do a little 50-word 50, 50 uh, blurb on food and flavoring chemistry. And my advice is when you do any kind of chemistry work, especially organic, and you're going to pick a molecule that's in the food and flavoring industry, make sure you give me the structure of that drug, or sorry, of that flavoring agent. You know, make it interesting. Make it engaging for everyone to read. So now, this is unit four. You're going to see that everything's the same as most units, but now we have the added exam. Complete exam one. So just keep in mind that not every unit is exactly the same, but most of them follow a very similar pattern. Grades. So here's where the here's the grades and here's how they break down. So quizzes, 100 points, two lowest scores dropped. Alex assignments is worth 40 points, lowest scores dropped. Now remember the assignments are simply where we think you should be in the pie progress. So just being on time is worth 40 points. But now look at this. The Alex Pi progress is 360 points out of 400. That's the vast majority of the Alex grade. So yes, I want you to be on time with your assignments, but I don't want to punish you too severely for not being on time. I want to reward you for learning organic chemistry. So just getting your Pi completed will help your, your overall organic chemistry grade immensely. So yes, please make these deadlines because it's going to help you for exams to keep up with your Alex. But if you can't do it, I don't want to punish you too severely. Most of your points are wrapped up in just finishing the Pi progress. But I will tell you this, students who finish their Alex on time before exams do well on the exams. That's generally how it works. The student interactive activities, there's 20 of them. 10 of them are for credit, 10 of them are extra credit, and that's a total of 100 points. And quite literally, guys, these are click-through click through, um, activities. They're very fast. They're not very hard. Uh, but they are there to help you master organic chemistry. Of course, exams, there's three of them worth 200 points for a grand total of 600 points. And exams make up just under 50% of your overall score. So more than 50% of this course is just doing what you're supposed to do. Study. Try to learn. Okay? 
So this class is easily doable if you do your work. And if you do your work, your scores on exams should be pretty good. I think most of you will do very well. So now if you get 90% of 1,300, you'll get an A. 80% between 80 and 89.9 of 1,300, you'll get a B and so on. Communication, we really do want you to correspond with us through D2L email. It is the simplest and best way to get a hold of a faculty member. The nice thing about D2L email is it also stamps the email with the class you're in. So I don't have to guess what class you're in. And it sometimes, well, it does take forever to figure out what class a student is in. So most faculty don't do that. We just email you back and ask you what class you're in. And it just takes time. So just, just uh, please email your faculty through uh, D2L email. If you're not getting a response or if it's a, an absolute necessity, you can use Broward.edu, but please only use that if it's absolutely necessary. Uh, you can read the netiquette rules for yourself. Essentially, it says to be polite and to, not to use, you know, acronyms like this because it's kind of like what we, someone may not know what that means. Faculty response. Generally speaking, we'll respond to you within 24 to 36 hours. Policy and procedures. Now, Academic accommodations. If you are a student with a, a letter from the Office of Student Disabilities at Broward College, please inform your faculty member privately as soon as you can because we have to make accommodations for you. It's never a problem. We'll work with you and we'll work with the college to make that happen. But sometimes accommodations to get accommodations set up, sometimes that does take time. So give your faculty member lots of notice so that we can get the ball rolling to help you uh, with your accommodations. Academic honesty, don't cheat. It's really easy to catch you. It's super simple. In this class, the only way you can actually cheat is on exams because everything else you can work together if you want, as far as I'm concerned. Now, your faculty may have different policy, so read their syllabus as well, but most faculty, I think, will be okay with you uh, working together on Alex or on quizzes or things like that. But on exams, you are completely on your own. So make sure, even if you work together with someone else, that you've still learned the material because you still have to know it. In this course, the first time you are found being academic dishonest, you'll receive a zero for the assignment or for the exam or whatever. If you are found academic dishonest, dishonest a second time, you will receive an F for this course. This is my policy. Now, if your faculty member may have a stricter policy, so make sure you read the syllabus for your specific faculty member. Changes to the syllabus, we have the right to change the syllabus basically whenever we want for whatever reason. So go ahead and read over the safety and security and emergency preparedness guide. That's some helpful information in there. And here are some numbers you can call if you need help and technical support. All right, so that is the syllabus. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is how to go through each unit. Very, very simple. Click on a unit. So this is unit one. So we have an overview, required readings, videos and practice, student interactive activities, formal charge quiz, and a unit one quiz. Very, very simple. Now, let's go under overview, why not? It's just gonna give you the learning outcome. So this is a specific learning outcome. You can read that at your pleasure. And click to the right. And this is the required reading for this unit. Now, this is a textbook. It's clicks right here, click on this link right here, and it'll take you right to it. We're in the front page of your textbook. So here's all the chapters the textbook has. We're not using all of them because this book covers organic one and organic two, but this is just where your book is. So now we were told to read 1.1. So click on here, one and 1.1 right here and click on that. And here you go. Just read 1.1. See, it's a short little thing, not very, not very long, not, a, not too uh, demanding of you. And that's how you get to the book and how you get to the subsequent uh, sections. Click on the right here. Let's scroll down. General Chemistry Review Lecture Slides. So this right here is yours truly's slides that he used in his videos. Scroll down, there you go. So these are the lecture slides I use in the videos. Click to the right. And here are the lecture videos. This is yours truly's YouTube channel. So go ahead and just watch those. Subscribe to my channel if you want to. Helps me out a lot if you do. And we have for your practice problems. Now, 
Remember, these are problems that you are not required to do, but they are very helpful. They test your knowledge and what you should have learned in the chapter. So here are the problems. They're in, you can see there they say PDF document underneath them. These are the problems. And down here where it says web page, these are the answer videos. So let's click on this problem right here. And here they are. And here is a QR code with a little dinosaur in it. If you scan that with your mobile device, your iPads, tablets, or phones, this will take you right to the YouTube video that tells you how to answer this problem. All in with Dr. Betts, that's my YouTube channel, so there's a watermark on this because I don't want people taking my work and making their own book with it or something. But you guys are free to use this as much as you want, uh, as long as you're in this class. My advice to students is answer this question to the best of your ability, scan this or otherwise go to the video, watch the video and see if you got it right. If you didn't get it right, try the question again. Very, very simple. So it's all about helping you learn organic chemistry. Now, the other way to get to the answer folder, or the answer videos, excuse me, is to go here. Understanding organic structural formula practice problems, answer videos. So here are all the answer videos you could want for those problems that are posted in this unit. Here are the videos that correspond to them. So you can come here if you want to find the video, or you can scan the QR code and go there with your mobile device. Uh, I think using your mobile device would probably be better so you can keep the question on the screen, have your answer on a little sheet of paper or whatnot, and you can use have the video playing on another device if, if you have you know enough devices, that is. If not, the videos are all right here. Okay, so scroll down. Here are some more practice problems. Practice problems involving loan pairs. So there's only one problem in this particular folder. And there's one video here. And also there's a QR code there. You can just go in the QR code. Here are some more practice problems. See, there's lots of them. And here's the answer videos here. So every practice problem has an answer video associated with it. So yes, there are a lot of problems. Organic chemistry is a problem-solving science. You're going to have to solve problems. You're going to have to write stuff down. You're going to have to draw things. Don't let that intimidate you. It's really not as hard as you think. But you do, you do, you do have to practice. If you don't, it's going to be quite a difficult course for you to master, um, unfortunately. Hopefully you'll do well. I think you will. All right, let me find the next thing. Student activities, right here. So here are your student activities for Unit 1A and Unit 1B. Remember, anything labeled Unit XA, in this, in this case 1A, is for credit. It does count. Anything labeled Unit XB, or in this case 1B, this is your extra credit. They are equally important, however. Don't think that because one is extra credit and one is not, that one's more important. They're equal. I very easily could have made resonance A and this and organic formulas B. They are equal. Okay, one's extra credit, one's for credit, but they're equal in terms of what you have to know. So let's click on this one. And the, these are really kind of fun. So here it is. Unit one, activity, organic formulas. Click on the start button here, and it'll lead you through it. Now, you have to read the information, click continue, and then just keep going through the material. Continue, you can, these are expandable and read all that material. Keep clicking through it, learning as you're going, hopefully taking notes, writing things down. I'm clicking through it pretty fast for this video, just showing it to you. Just keep clicking. Now, notice there's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot. You can't get to this stuff that's grayed out though until you click continue. So it's gonna force you to go through all the material. And this is all stuff you would have learned in the lecture video. It's just reinforcing it, making sure you know it. Because if you don't, you're going to have problems going forward in this class. Okay, so this is one of the one of the two uh, student activities. Go back to the general chemistry folder, and let's scroll down. So once you've done these activities, here's your formal charge quiz, and here's your unit one quiz. Now I'm on the faculty side of D2L, so I have to do some something interesting to get to a quiz. You guys will just click it, just click the button, and it'll work for you. As a faculty member, I have to do the whole. Um, can, I, can I even get to it from here? Okay, click on it. Now you guys, it'll go right to it for you guys. Uh, I have to hit preview because that's just how it goes. 
So when you guys click the button, it'll take you directly to this screen right here. Um, it says five attempts. You're only allowed three out to change that. Hit start quiz. And here is the unit one quiz. Oh, this is actually the formal charge quiz. Sorry, formal charge quiz. All the quizzes are similar. Uh, this is a fill in the blank quiz, so no problem. You guys can do this, no problem. If you watch the video, you should be able to solve these questions fairly easily. And if you can't, uh, contact your faculty member, get some help. Really, really not that hard. Submit the quiz. I didn't answer any, so it's going to tell me they're all wrong. That's okay. So these are the questions I got wrong. So I didn't fill in any answers. I got them all wrong. Okay? And you'll have three chances to get that done. Get it done and get 100% on it. Now let's say we're on Unit 2. Unit 2 has a discussion. Discussion, food and flavoring chemistry. So click on that. And it takes you to here. Gives you an introduction. Food and flavoring chemistry is a multi-billion dollar industry. As part of this industry, a food and flavor chemist will mix different flavoring molecules to enhance the flavor of the foods we eat today. Get ready. For this discussion, select the molecule from the list. So basically, you're going to select one of these molecules. They're all flavoring agents. And you're going to read about it. You're going to learn about it. You're going to distill the information down for us to about 50 words. You're going to show us the structure. And we're all going to read it. And people are going to comment on it. And it's going to be fun. Everybody be polite. Everyone be nice. It's all about learning. It's all about helping each other get interested in organic chemistry. And you get credit for doing this. And let's go to unit four right here. This is where there's an exam. So here's an exam right here. Now, I'm not going to click that because it'll take me into the exam and show you the questions. But remember, you're going to have to have Honor Lock, Google Chrome, and the Honor Lock Chrome extension installed. All right? And this is more or less how you walk through the course, guys. It's really not a complicated course to walk through, but there are a lot of little things you have to do. Now, there's one big thing you have to do, and that's Alex. Alex is going to take you time. Don't sit back on Alex. Don't delay. Don't take days off. Don't take weeks off. Get to work on Alex. It will really help you move forward in this course. All right, guys. So now that's the end of this video, and I want to wish you all good luck and good organic chemistry. We'll see you soon.